If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Period. If you're just the normal, typical, evangelical, you're wrong about almost everything. We are so far removed from Scripture that if someone comes to us with Scripture, we think they're out of their minds. I know this is going to be offensive to you, but you're totally broken. We can't tweak you. We can't add a few little silly Christian cliches onto a secular life and that result in true discipleship. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. I'm talking about following Jesus Christ. You say it's not difficult in the United States. The most difficult place I've had to follow Jesus Christ, the most costliest place, is the United States. And if it doesn't cost you anything, it's because you've bought in to American Christianity. But listen to this. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. One thing about Scripture, it just drops it like a ton of lead right on you. So absolute. If you came in this door right now and you told us you just got hit by an 18-wheeler and you look just like you all look right now, we'd all say you're lying to us. I don't think that's, that's the basic weight of the matter. He's saying, look, when you're born again and when you're indwelt by the Spirit of God, it is so radical and it so produces a love for God and a hate for this world that it is so stark, it is so real, it is so obvious and if you have believed in Jesus, if you truly have unto salvation, you have been regenerated and your heart has been changed and that new heart has new affections. And those affections are righteous and holy and Godward. And those new affections drive your will to a different life. You know what a lot of people think that, that Christianity is? They think Christianity is... Um, you doing all the righteous things you hate and avoiding all the wicked things you love in order to go to heaven. No, that's a lost man and religion. A Christian is a person whose heart has been changed. They have new affections. But, like a child that's been born, they're going, I, knew, I have new affections. They're Godward. I love God. I, I want to be conformed to the image of Christ. But how do I do it? And that's where the Word of God comes in. It's not burdensome to you, forcing you to do what you don't want to do and keeping you from doing all the rotten things you want to. No, you've been changed. You just need to know how to walk now. The problem is, because the gospel presentation in America is so weak, pray this prayer, ask Jesus to come into your heart, you're saved. So many people think they're saved, but their heart, their desires, everything has not been changed ever. And so then you get them into a discipleship program and you try to force them to walk like a sheep when they're still a goat. It doesn't work. So the first thing is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The evidence that you're a Christian is not that you confess faith in Jesus or you're a part of some Christian ministry or anything. It's that your affections have changed. They're Godward. You love Jesus Christ. And you have no bones about if it says in Scripture you're to do something... Okay, let's do it. He said it. He's master. That's what Lord means. The truth is, this is, so, this is so obvious when it happens to somebody's life. It takes them where they're in this course and it totally spins them around so obviously that, brethren, I've seen it. I've seen this happen to people. The worldliness just starts to fall off. One after another, it falls off. And I'll tell you this, people that have supposedly had this amazing, this amazing transformation happen in their life and conversion, and all of a sudden, two, three, four, five years down the road, the worldliness just hasn't fallen off, brethren. Just, there's no truth to it. Mm -hmm. you, you say, well, you can't say that. You're judging I can say that because God's Word says that. If that person shows by a continuous ongoing lifestyle that they're in love with the world, they do not love God. They are those adulteresses and adulterers that James is dealing with, and they're at enmity with God. Lay it down. Hands down, folks. You know what? I got people in this room right now. You are as lost as anything.
You are lost. You are still dead in your sins. And you are following the course of this world. It's just real. I know when it, with this many people in a room, there's an, any number of you that fit that description. So I've got one of two kinds of people here. I've got people that are following the course of the world now, or I've got people who were. So this isn't foreign to any of us. You know what? There's a mindset in other countries, if you're an American, you're a Christian. Well, those people are sadly misled. They don't know our country. Our country is wicked. And the Christians are few. Just like they're few in other countries, they're few here. There may be many churches, and there may be church buildings on every street corner, on every corner of our, in our cities across this country, but the true Christians are few. How much of your life is defined by what the Word of God says, by what Jesus says, and how much of it is defined by culture? Just think about that. How many Christians do you know could open up a Bible and go down biblically, verse by verse, and show you why they do what they do in their relationships with the opposite sex? How many Christians do you know could open up the Bible and go verse by verse and tell you, this is, the why, this is why I dress this way. This is why I talk this way. This is why I'm in college. Almost no one. Entering in the narrow gate is allowing Him to define your life and not in general terms. See, there's your problem. Oh, Jesus is everything to me and Jesus is Lord. Okay, specifically though, explain to me what that means. What does it cost you? How have you changed your life from the course the rest of the world is walking in? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Therein lies the problem. You don't know what I'm talking about. This is true. That's a reality. When you look at all the pictures of Judgment Day, what differentiates those who are saved from those who are lost on Judgment Day is the life they lived and how it was so drastically different from the life of those who didn't have it. That, that's always what it is. It's never just a, it's never just a did, you, did you claim to believe in Jesus? Well, yes, I did. Okay, you're in. It's never that. It's always what did, what did all your confessions of Christ actually yield in your life? Do they show that Christ was with you? Do they show an evidence of... And this is what he's saying. Depart from me, those of you who claim to be my disciples, but you lived as though I never gave you a law to obey. Now, isn't that frightening? How many of you are guiding your life based on principles, commands, and laws, and statements of wisdom that Jesus has given? How many Christians do you actually know that are living that way? Depart from me, those of you who said, Lord, Lord, and considered yourselves to be my disciples, but you lived as though I never gave you a law to obey. That's something. And what he says, you and I never had an intimate relationship. What? You went through that track and then prayed the prayer at the end? What's that? I never knew you. You, you didn't come to me seek me. We didn't walk together, talk together. You didn't seek me for counsel. You didn't follow my law. You didn't treat me as king. You weren't a part of any of the principles or commands of the kingdom. Absolutely not. I don't know you. Depart from me. But you have to understand, you come out of a Christianity that in its theology is absolutely despicable. We're an aberration I'm not saying this to hurt you. I'm saying it, it because it's true. It really is, and you need to be afraid about it. And you need to get serious. If you are going to walk with Jesus Christ, you are going to be opposed by everything in the world and by the great majority of evangelicals. You're going to be opposed. 